Hello and welcome friends. This evening I have for you a wonderful, wonderful fountain pen made in Germany in the 1960s. And I present to you this beautiful Faber-Castell Progress fountain pen. Well, I bought this fountain pen in uh, its original pack and uh, the price was quite decent. I paid 265 lace for it or uh, the equivalent of 53.54 uh, euros or 60.70 American dollars. As you can see, the box is quite, quite interesting. It is a cardboard box. We have A.W. Faber Castell, Full Harter Fabrique, Dosenheim Bay Heidelberg. So the fountain pen fabric from uh, that era located in the town of Dusenheim near Heidelberg. Here we have an interesting uh, name of the model, but you can you will see that inside we have a different model. We have B, the same size of the nib, but uh, on uh, the box we have 55576 Malaku. And, in fact, on the box you can see this beautiful, beautiful fountain pen, which I will review today. We have the Faber Progress 77GB. So, 77 is the name of the model, and G stands for the gold nib. You must know that this fountain pen was a fountain pen intended for the middle range market most of the fountain pens from the 77 range were made with the steel nib and uh, the g tells us that this model is equipped with a gold nib b stands for a broad nib what can i tell you about faber castell well, uh, Faber-Castell was uh, known for its stationary products, but in 1951, they uh, took over another German pen manufacturer, the Osmia manufacturer. In fact, Osmia was a well-known German producer. They produced some quality pieces in the 1930s. They were active on uh, German since 1919. But uh, due to the revolution brought by the ballpoint pen, they had to close their gates and, in fact, they were bought by Faber-Castell. In the late 1950s, as ballpoint pens began to dominate the market, Faber-Castell rationalized their product range and introduced a new medium price product called Progress. And I have here a wonderful, wonderful Progress 77G from the mid-1960s. Uh, what can I tell you guys? A quite, quite nice design. You can tell that it is a design from the 1950s. Let me compare it first with some other German products. And after that, I will... Uh, present to you the details of this beautiful beautiful piece so i have just for comparison some other models those two were export models by uh, lamar and lamar was a german manufacturer of fountain pens and they exported their products overseas you can see the classical torpedo shape of the 1950s the open nib and the large large ink window in uh, comparison our faber castell from the 1960s has a semi-hooded nib and this is mainly to the influence of the parker 51 and it has a multifaceted ink window. Also a piston filler, guys. And I also have with me a sub-brand 
of Lamy and uh, this sub brand or this particular model was sold on the Italian market. This is a model from the 1950s. When I uh, acquired the Faber Castell, I immediately thought of my Artus fountain pen. You can see the similarities. They were both intended for the school market and uh, the main difference you will see resides in their nib. So an open nib versus the semi-hooded nib of the Faber Castell model. And also some faceted in windows, but these are larger on the Artus model. Very interesting, you can see the curved shape of the Artus, but the trend of the late 60s and 1970s was to abandon this torpedo shape. And you can see another model, another Artus model, also made for the Italian market right here. Well, I'm quite curious to see. Yes, we have the same trend of a semi-hooded nib, this time with another design of the ink window. So this was the trend evolution back then. And also for the trend evolution, I bought with me several designs of the 1970s. And I will start with the Mont Blanc. This is the 220 model. This is uh, the beautiful Pelicano Steno from 1973. And, and uh, another uh, model from Pelican, Pelicano from the 70s. And another model of the Mont Blanc. So again, this is the evolution of the 1970s. So cut. We don't have that rounded shape, we have simple shapes. And again, a model from Lamy. This is from the late 60s, Lamy 2730. And a great leap in the design evolution. When we talk about the 1960s German design, we must show the futuristic design of the Lamy 2000. And if I'm not mistaken, guys, uh, this was uh, launched in 1967. Yes, if I'm not mistaken. So look what we have here in comparison with the Faber Castell. So Faber Castell has the same, the same rounded designs. But if we open them, we can see the difference. Although the same trend of a semi-hooded nib. Let me leave uh, the Lamy 2000 aside and I will show you some interesting, interesting characteristics also of our fountain pen. So again, let's start with the rounded shape. They still maintain the rounded shape of the 1950s. A very elegant fountain pen. I love the blue color. It is a quite nice, nice turquoise, dark turquoise color. It has uh, those gold trims. Let me see how springy the clip is. It's quite springy. It has an interesting, interesting design, as you can see. On uh, the end of the cap, we have engraved Faber Castell and the name of the line progress again a beautiful beautiful fountain pen if we unscrew the cap we can see those multifaceted ink windows it certainly reminds us of the ink windows we see on the mont blanc meisterstück line i also like the fact that these threads are made out of metal and not plastic. We can see the beautiful gold nib. In fact, we have a four and I presume it's from 14 karat. Again, a broad nib, you can see the generous ending of the nib, which means we have a broad, broad nib. I can hardly wait to write with it. And of course, guys, this is a piston filler. 
and we have an integrated cap i hope i don't have ink in it but i will show you in a minute how it writes of course before i will show it to you let me compare with a mont blanc 146 meisterstück from 1983 you can see the length of course the mont blanc 146 is a little bit uh, lengthier uh, it's a little bit big it also has a bigger barrel the diameter of it is bigger than the faber caster and uh, i will also leave on the screen the dimensions of this beautiful beautiful progress faber castle 77g okay before i will do the writing uh, sample let me show you again the box it has a little girl uh, drawn here i believe to test the fountain pen but it also has the original leaflet and uh, i tried to google translate it but uh, it um, didn't do quite well so i'm just showing it to you so these are the instruction papers for a fountain pen and uh, they show you step by step how to unscrew the cap how to operate the piston filler and how to draw ink from the inkwell and i believe some warranty informations here and interesting here the location of the offices was in stein near nuremberg in opposition to what we have written here on uh, the actual box and it says uh, dosenheim near heidelberg so maybe the manufacturing uh, uh, fabric was located in dosenheim and the offices were located in stein i'm not so sure but i'm uh, i know that you will help me in the comments interesting this is the old osmia logo and i remember to you they bought osmia in 1951 and they still used this logo so interesting 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 an interesting little piece of history i will leave this aside and i will change the angle of the camera and i will take out all the other fountain pens from the picture for you to see a proper writing sample i've uh, returned guys with another perspective this is the fountain pen this is the box these are the uh, instructions for the writing sample i thought to myself that uh, color matching the color of the body will be quite nice and i have here a modern faber castell ink in turquoise and um, i think it's quite suitable for the writing sample so this is the ink guys and let me give it a little shake i place it right here okay now i like to show you what i i am doing so I will unscrew this part of the fountain pen till it reaches the end. <laughs> you can see the plastic ending. Okay. Now I will gently do this to the bottle and I will draw the ink. The piston works quite smooth, so it's good till the end. Now I will gently remove the excess of the ink and I have here a tissue, I will use it to clean it thoroughly, okay, so, okay, it's nice. Always guys, after you use the ink bottle, make sure you put the 
cap back on to avoid little unwanted incidents. This fountain pen can be posted and it posts right over the beautiful engraving and you can see it wasn't used hardly used because this engraving has maintained that gold ink over it so you can post it right here but again we have plastic on plastic and in time it can leave micro scratches so we will leave it unposted for the moment okay so i am ready now for the writing sample maybe a little zoom will be good let me see if i can okay yes now i'm ready i hope it will focus on what i am writing yes so i have a faber castell whoa guys I'm telling you right now, this is a smooth, smooth nib. Progress. The model is 77G with a B, B, B broad nib. We have a 14 carat B broad nib. This is a product made in Germany. in the mid 1960s okay a uh, wonderful wonderful piston uh, with an ink window let me show you uh, this is a by the way a semi hooded nib semi hooded nib this was a trend started by the famous parker 51 let me show you if we have a flexible nib so I will try to flex it as much as I can. We certainly don't have a stiff nib, but I can't tell you we have a flexible nib. No flex to it. And uh, let me show you if we have some line variations. Here we don't have pressure, but here we have a little bit of pressure. So no difference between them, no visible line variance. We certainly have a juicy nib and I hope it will show on paper. Yes, you can see. A nice, nice signature piece. It is quite smooth and it does signatures quite, quite nice. Again, this broad nib helps this fountain pen a lot. I think I uh, love it. I'm curious to see in reverse writing how a broad nib does. Reverse writing yes i was expecting of a little bit of scratching but uh, i think it writes like an m nib like a medium nib in comparison with the broad nib let's see here we have a medium it scratches a little bit so it isn't intending for uh, reverse writing so I will call it a no. Of course, if you have to write short, short passages, of course, you can use this difference between a broad and a medium nib. Okay, guys, let me see if I have other tests. I've shown you how you can do a signature. I believe this is all. Now I can tell you about, let me zoom out for a bit, yes. And I will give it a little focus. I hope it will focus. Yes. So the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. What can I tell you guys? This is a beautiful, beautiful German fountain pen with a wonderful, wonderful nib. It simply glides, guys. It glides on the paper. Um, 
I think it's quite smooth, smooth, and it's a joy to ride with. This was my review of the beautiful, beautiful Faber Castle Progress 77G. I hope you've uh, enjoyed this review. I hope you've enjoyed the comparison with other German designs from the same period. If you've enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to my channel to support my activity. In return, I will try to show you each and every day some new additions to my collection. Wherever you are, guys, I want to wish you to have a nice day. I thank you for your time. Please stay safe in this pandemic. I will see you in the next episode. Till then, bye-bye and God bless.